welcome everyone uh, for you to join the call. Really, really excited to meet you all. And this is the first community call, so hopefully the first of many. Um, so we'll be taking learnings from this and seeing if this is a format that you want to see or we want to change things up. Uh, but yeah, we're Diversify. Um, Diversify's mission is to make DeFi easy for everyone. Um, we've been building on uh, something known as Layer 2 Ethereum um, for just over a year now. I've been putting in a lot of groundwork um, and we're really, really excited for the next couple of months because we've got a lot in the pipeline. And the whole, the whole idea is bringing all of the cool stuff from uh, DeFi Layer 1 onto Layer 2 and making it easy so you can swap, uh, send, trade, uh, yield farm, all from your Diversify control center um, in complete privacy with security uh, without paying any gas fees. Um, we think layer two is a significant part of the Ethereum future, uh, the Ethereum roadmap, and even Vitalik says so himself. And we want to play a key part in that. So very, very exciting. Um, one of the, um, the things that we, we really want to do is to open up Diversify as much as possible to the community. So really giving the community the ability to not only shape the future of Diversify, but drive it forward. Um, to do that, we're launching our, our DVF token, which is our governance token, uh, which controls aspects of the protocol, including things like uh, fee shares, um, you know, potentially assets to be added to the platform uh, and the DVF treasury as well, uh, and a few other things which we will come on to. And that's a key part in Diversify's mission to become decentralized. Uh, we're launching uh, in a couple of phases. We split it into two phases, phase one and phase two. So phase one, which is this Thursday, is starting with the uh, the DVF sort of soft launch. So we're doing this via a mechanism called a Diversify launch market. And this is a really cool new mechanism. It's new to DeFi. This has never, ever before been done. But it's a fair mechanism for launching a token on layer two. It's similar to a balancer liquidity bootstrapping pool, if anyone's used those before. Uh, essentially a continuous liquidity reverse auction where the price starts high to prevent people front running and fastest finger first and bots taking over. And then the price, price gradually declines uh, in DBS case over 48 hours. And then you can participate when you think that the price is right for you. And this is a really cool mechanism because it means we can get as many people as possible uh, involved in the sale without paying gas, privacy, and in a fair way. And that's how we plan to launch the token. It's a very small sale, and the proceeds of that sale, they're not going to Diversify Labs, uh, the company or the project. They're actually fully owned by the DVF treasury, so by DVF holders. And the idea is then we seed a deep on-chain liquidity pool uh, with the proceeds of that sale. So it's there, it doesn't go anywhere. There's always that liquidity, uh, which is one of the problems that we've seen other projects face. They do the sale and then there's no liquidity afterwards. So really, really excited for that phase one launch. Phase two, which is then a couple of weeks later, and you know, in the interim, there's gonna be lots of fun stuff happening. There'll be an app, the app relaunching, a governance V1, but V2 is the start of what we're kind of calling the, like the main product release. So this is the, the launch of our uh, layer two AMMs, uh, which Comrade can talk about, uh, liquidity mining. So to incentivize liquidity into those AMMs, uh, we'll be launching liquidity mining and then governance will be expanded as well and lots of other cool stuff. So those are the two main phases uh, over the next month or so. And then there's a whole roadmap after that, but that's really the kind of the Kickstarter is these two phases. Um, that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to say for now. I don't know if you want to add anything, Conrad or Lexi, before we open the floor up to questions. Uh, Comrade, I don't know if, if you want to jump in. We had a couple of questions submitted um, through social media uh, and through the Discord, so I can kind of read those out in the different phases. But um, Ross, I don't know if you want to talk through, um, or Comrade, that we have included a kind of screen grab of the DLM, so I don't know if you want to talk that through now. Um, if I can just get my computer to respond. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't see the screen share either, so I, I'm not sure what you've presented there, Ross, but yeah, I don't have anything else to, to add, but obviously very happy to answer specific questions that might come up about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I've got a screen grab of what the uh, the DVF DLM will look like uh, on Thursday. Uh, so you can see here, uh, this is a, a swap interface, the new swap interface that should be launching. Uh, you can come to this page, you can see interesting metrics about the, the DVF DLM, such as the time left, the current market price, the amount of 
uh, tokens out of the total amount allocated that have been sold and the holders are on layer two because we realize that everything's private on diversify so you can't you can't see how many holders are holding any tokens let alone dvf so we wanted to surface some of this in the page so you kind of see more statistics about the sale and then yep you've got the chart there so you see the price progression you've got the swap interface on the left there so you you can do all your swapping and the really cool thing about the, the dlm is not only does the price start high and go lower but it's, it's something known as continuous liquidity. So it's essentially replicating a pool. So you can not only buy DVF, but you can then resell your DVF into the pool if you change your mind or you think that the price has got too high. Um, towards the end of the sale, if all the tokens are sold, it might get very volatile, for example, the price might jump around significantly and having the ability to resell DVF into the pool or buy more means that we should land on something akin to a fair market price uh, which is why it's a really cool mechanism. Great, thanks Ross. I think um, uh, I'm happy to open it up to the floor or we could just run through a couple of the questions that were submitted on social media because I think they've, they're actually really great. Um, I think, comrade, I'm just admitting back into the room so hopefully he'll join in a second. Um, <laughs> but the, the first question that came through was, um, how did we come up with the idea for the DLM on layer two uh, and how long has it taken us to create? I can answer the first bit of that and then maybe Comrade can do the actual brains bit. Um, we did quite a lot of research into launch mechanisms for, for our token. And we were originally going to use a, a balancer liquidity bootstrapping pool. Uh, there's been some really good sales that have gone on there. Uh, Illuvium's one, Maple's another. And it's a really good way of getting people to participate in a, a fair launch mechanism where it's completely open. Anyone can participate, it's all transparent and on chain. We really, really loved that idea and really wanted to take elements of that. But when we started examining this, gas prices were at something like a thousand guay. So it would have cost $400 upwards for somebody to participate in the sale. And that's just to do one swap, no matter if you're doing a $10 swap or a you know, $100,000 swap. And that just doesn't gel with our with our desire to make DeFi accessible for everyone. So it would have been very easy to do something like a balancer pool or a, a some of the other ones that, that we've seen last summer. But we thought, hey, we wanna take this opportunity to actually build something that really opens this up to everyone. And no matter if you've got $5 or $1,000. So we thought, why don't we replicate this on layer two? And then when we started digging into it, when Comrade started digging into it, we actually realized that we could make some tweaks that made it even more exciting. So for a bootstrapping pool, the team who's funding that pool has to uh, bump the price down so it, it fits to the, the, the time decay curve, which can cost quite a lot of money. You don't need to do that on Diversify. A balance of pools are completely on chain, which is fantastic for transparency and security, but you can also see what other people are doing. So if you've got an advanced strategy where you're trying to accumulate, people can see that. They can see the massive whales accumulating or selling. So bringing that onto Diversify, which is completely private, means that actually it allows more advanced sort of strategies to be deployed. And those are just some of the advantages. Um, so that's why we decided to do this. It's taken a bit longer. We could have just done a, you know, an on-chain launch, but we thought, no, this is a really cool product that we can hopefully offer to other people as well. Uh, so yeah, th those are the, the sort of main answer to the question there. I don't know if you want to dive in there, Conrad, with anything else on the how we built it. Sure. So just to add to that, I mean, philosophically, our whole... I mean, scaling is more than just a necessity. We saw it as actually an interesting technical challenge and opportunity to democratize access to a lot of these products. I mean, Ross was mentioning about how uh, we want Diversify to become almost like a command center or a central place where you can access a lot of these opportunities and um, markets from a single place without being encumbered by, by gas. And it rather would have been a bit, well, it would have been disingenuous if then we had to fall back to using uh, a layer one solution to do our sort of token launch and auction. Uh, of course, there, there were some mechanisms and we did a lot of research and took inspiration from them uh, in order to work out what it is that we wanted to do. But it was very much in our mind that we wanted to show off the tech that we've been building for the last year or more, actually longer than a year, um, and leverage it in this, in this new way and create something that hasn't been done before. Now, in terms of uh, implementing the DLM on, on layer two, it's been a really interesting challenge because it boils down to a number of different components. At our core, we have a high-speed execution mechanism, which is trustless, it's private, as Ross said, 
Um, but it's very much that it's a flat marketplace where anyone can participate. Uh, and we've got a lot of liquidity from other sources and markets that we supply. Now for launch auctions, um, we are leveraging the same sort of mechanism behind the scenes, but we are actually adding an ability to control what happens. So in the same way that a balancer launch pool would have a starting price and then would decay over time, um, we have the similar sort of we have the same we have the same sort of approach that we're undertaking. Our pricing is effectively a two-dimensional price model with time and volume being the, the coordinates or the axes, I should say. So the more that people are buying, the more the price goes up, the more the people sort of change their minds and sell back to the pool, the more the price is depressed. Um, and over time the price decays anyway. So it creates this wonderful situation where actually having gone through the numbers and simulated a few outcomes. Uh, before we wrote, uh, before we arrived at the equations that we're using now, um, it was really quite exciting to see how, through quite organic activity uh, and just people signalling interest in the token, you would arrive to a, a fair price uh, with a mechanism that was, first of all, quite easy to understand to the outsider, um, but also quite fair for people to participate in without the opportunities, for example, front running or something like that, that might happen on chain. So, yeah, in terms of building it, how long have we been building? That's an interesting question because I suppose it's difficult for me to sort of pick apart when we started thinking about in the research and development effort. But I'd say actually we've been working for maybe three or four weeks um, on different parts of the design and the system. But of course, the, the parts beneath the, beneath the hood that actually power it and make it possible, this is the, the sum of all the work that we've been putting in over you know, the last year or, or more so it's a little bit of a difficult one to answer but yeah the dlm i suppose is, is a, it's one of the newest features that we're providing uh, on top of our platform but the interesting thing is this model that we've used here first of all it can be spun off for other token launches but this idea that we have um the ability to control the underlying market uh within certain parameters that we publish well that's something that can be applied to all manner of different applications and this is very much just the future. Great, thanks comrade. I think, um, and Ross as well. I think Connor, I think uh, has a question. Thank you very much for waiting and, and politely raising your hand if you want to yeah. ask your question. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, uh, Ross kind of answered it a little bit about, because he said that um, you envisage like other, um, I guess, people using like the DLM. Uh, like if other people were using it, would does that mean like diversifies almost like has a launch pad product or not? And then like if other projects launched on the DLM, do swap fees go towards say token holders or is that kind of what you envisage or not? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Uh, and the answer to the latter part is it's completely up for the community to decide. So the, the really cool thing about DLMs is for all the reasons we spoke, spoke about before, uh, High-speed execution, so no front-running, uh, gasless, private. Uh, essentially, it, it allows wider participation, and that could really gel with some projects. So some projects are going to want to launch on layer one. Some projects are going to want to launch on uh, a centralized exchange. But I think there could be a really cool niche in the market for people that want to launch on layer two, especially as layer two grows and becomes more important over the next couple of years. So we've already spoken to two projects about potentially uh, them launching using a DLM. So there's going to be a lot of eyes on the this one, the DVF DLM, uh, you know, it might not go perfect, but, you know, we can always improve it and really, really want to kind of showcase the technology and show people that actually this could really work for them. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting a couple of weeks and very exciting in terms of the what you could do. There's all sorts of things you could do uh, the fees for it. You could put to uh, DVF holders. You could potentially have some. Um, preferential access to DVF holders, like an early access or something. Well, I'm not sure how that would work with this, but there's a few people that have already uh, pinged, pinged us uh, over Discord asking the same thing. And I think there's a lot of really cool, unique ways that we could take this. I mean, all of these parameters are tunable and we can, yeah, there are many ways that we can potentially look at doing this depending upon the project's needs and yeah. And the really cool thing here is once the uh, Diversify AMMs launch, you, once the market closes, once the DLM market closes, you can then immediately switch it into a 50-50 AMM pool on Diversify. So again, there's, there's a seamless liquidity transition, which you might not get from some other venues. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks for answering. Thanks, Connor.
Great question, Connor. Thank you. Um, does anyone else? I, sorry, just I take objection to we may not get it right. Of course we're going to get it right. It's going to be the best <laughs> launch mechanism in the world. I'll hold you to that, comrade. <laughs> Um, awesome. Thanks, guys. A great Connor. A uh, great question, Connor. Um, oh, yep. I think we've got another question. Um, sorry, chat from gone. I don't. You've, your name in here is Monsieur Extraordinaire. Boom. So I guess I'll I'll go with that. Uh, if you wanted to ask uh, your question now. <laughs> oh, it's still showing like that. Uh, sorry, that was I was trying to throw somebody. <laughs> That's okay. I think it's great. Get, let's go with that. Okay. So just two questions. First, I mean it sounds very basic because I'm not really used to it, but are you able to invest in the pool via do you, do you have to do it to the desktop alone or you can do it with a mobile application mobile phone fantastic yeah. and was that your did you have two questions did you say yeah i have to the second one was um so i did read that you said the pool will be open for the 48 that um, our deadline expires that means that just for further clarity that means that even though the two million tokens will be sold out if, if that happens, it's also open and it's wide. Sorry, was this, what, was that, what was that last question? Sorry, my hearing's terrible. So you said uh, the, there's two okay, million so I'm saying, tokens for the pool and why, why did we choose two million? No, no, no. My understanding is um, you are sticking to the 48 deadline open period, right? Yes, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so my question is, will it still be open even after the tokens are sold out? Or Yes, gotcha. Sorry, I understand now. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you. So, in terms of the access, uh, so you need USDT, and you need to do it via the um, launch uh, via the desktop uh, application. We do have uh, mobile plans on the horizon, and some of the trading key stuff that we've been doing over the past couple of weeks, uh, opening that up. But right now, it has to be on desktop uh, for sure. And then, in terms of the second question, the the sale will last for 48 hours, but because it's continuous liquidity and because of the mechanics, actually, you, you will never get to a scenario where all of the tokens are sold. Uh, if, if the towards the the end of the either the end yeah, of the sale right. or the yeah. the pool, yeah, if you get to you know a 95% scenario yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. so uh, so we will um, the pool will, will continue and it it should sort of stabilize and yeah, then, yeah, then yeah, we'll yeah. close That's it. True. That's true. That's, no, that's a good, good question, Zay. Just, just to add a couple of things. So pricing is dependent. It's using this sort of constant product formula like approach of AMM. So the more you buy, the, the more disadvantaged the, the price will be. Same on the selling side. So we're sort of incentivizing smaller buys and sells. Um, and I'm sorry, what's the other point? Oh, yes, on the, on the mobile side. So we've actually done a lot of work behind the scenes to support that. Technically, we can actually support mobile wallets at the moment with the latest version that we've deployed. Um, but the limiting factor there is actually um, our website. So we've got a redesign uh, that's going to be going live imminently, which is really exciting. So really cool seeing what the designers and the UI guys have done for that. Um, the next sort of logical stage is actually opening up so that mobile users will be able to, first of all, participate on the markets and actually be sort of first class citizens. For now, we just have a, a really basic sort of UI where you can see the, the markets that you have on diversify volume and trading information, but you can't actually participate, which is you know suboptimal, but it's one of the things that's going to be coming very soon. Thanks, guys. Um, we had a great question submitted um, from Tony. Uh, so a couple of questions. Firstly, um, is there a limitation on the amount that each user can buy in the pool or kind of um, purchase in the event? And secondly, what will happen to the price of the token if they're all sold before the kind of expired time? So I think we just kind of talked through how that, that probably won't happen. We won't have an expiration uh, necessarily. But the first question around uh, limit per user would be a good one to cover, I think. Yeah, uh, there's no there's no limits. Uh, the there's a me there's me the nature of the pool is that there's slippage, which discourages uh, one-off large buys. So if someone comes in and tries to buy all in one go. The, the, the constant product uh, AMM like you're used to, Uniswap or Curve, will cause slippage. So it potentially would, they would get a, a very bad price for that, which is inbuilt whale protection, if, if you will. Um, not to say that the same person couldn't do lots of smaller orders over a period of time to, to gradually uh, increase their DVF position. But in terms of one-off large buys, probably pretty unlikely uh, because it would result in significant slippage. 
Mm. So it's, a, it's an exponential, so it's non-linear. The more you, uh, some, one individual person would buy in a short time period, the, 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 few, the more the price would increase. And actually somebody looking to accumulate over a period of time by making small purchases, I mean, that's the sort of behavior actually we've tuned the algorithms for because that then is going to cause price changes, which then will influence other people's buying decisions or selling decisions. So it's a system that naturally equilibrates. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, Connor, I think you have you got another question? Yeah, it's not really one about the platform as much, but like it's obviously right. Ross said he um, I think worked at Bitfinex, did you? Or not? I can't remember. Um, yeah. I was just wondering if there was still a connection with Bitfinex in any like anywhere um, or not really. Yeah, there's no um, no connection in terms of uh, you know our project setup or operations or anything like that. Um, the connection that we do have is we aggregate liquidity on uh, some of the diversified markets from Bitfinex and other sources. And we've got a really good relationship with the guys at Bitfinex and they do lots of things that have helped us facilitate that market making service. So when you go on to, for example, the wrapped Bitcoin USDT market on diversify, that is an insanely liquid market and the, no one else can replicate that. It's taken you know, a year to build and it's, really only done via the combined might of you know Com comrades team uh, and our sort of commercial relationships with Bit with bitfinex um you can go and do incredibly you know huge orders of, of bitcoin a wrap bitcoin uh on on that on that market and it's you know no, you can't do that anywhere else so that's the main um that's, that's the only real relationship we have with bitfinex is via that liquidity aggregation cool thanks and in terms right. of your DVF, they you know they don't have any DVF or anything like that, so there's no uh, ongoing you know governance control or anything like that. Great, thanks for clarifying, Wes. Uh, so I think we're coming up to six o'clock. I don't know if there are any other questions from in the room, or if there's anything else that people wanted to cover or kind of discuss at this point. 